Hey guys, Matt from Iron Trap Garage, uh, working on Sweetheart Roadster again. I know I said in a previous episode I was thinking about doing a, a 9 inch uh, rear or an 8 inch forward rear, but uh, I had some soul searching and uh, realized that just wasn't going to work for the car. Everything else is like so awesome and period correct. Doing that probably would have made me unhappy down the road. So, uh, by chance, uh, a, a local guy that buys and sells uh, some stuff. He, he listed up this really nice uh, 36 rear and that's kind of what I wanted from the beginning other than a quick quick change this is probably the next best thing as far as I'm concerned for uh, an early uh, hot rod build. So pick this thing up. Uh, Andrew and I got the torque tube and the drive shaft already off of this thing uh, and now we need to uh, take the spring out and swap it out for uh, a Model A spring so that we can uh, fit that up in the Model A uh, rear cross member that we put in and hopefully uh, swap these drums out, get the thing down on, on wheels in the back, and we got the front already notched so we can get that all on as well again and set it down on four wheels, hopefully. So uh, we'll start working on this spring and uh, messing with this, and then we'll go from there. got the uh, the 36 spring out of the rear uh, if you're careful you can take them apart you can take this out um, without taking the whole spring apart and you can get it to slide off which we did there's a little bit of tension there but not as much as a T or an A spring so if you're real careful you can you can get it apart um, which we did got off the car in one piece so what I wanted to show you is the difference between the, a stock Model A spring and the 36 spring as far as the eye to eye goes so what we're going to be doing is mounting this A spring to the mounts on the bone on the wishbones um, to the stock location, and then we're going to put it up in the A cross member, which is going to actually lower the car quite a bit, uh, which we're hoping will get us about where we need. So eye to eye, they're really darn close. Uh, the A spring is spread apart quite a bit more than a 36 spring. I think I looked it up, and it was something like three inches a side or four inches a side or three and a half is how much it moves the A spring when you actually mount it on the stock A rear. So this isn't nearly that. Um, it might be an inch and a half on either side. So this should be no problem to spread it apart. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to break this A spring apart because it's a stock A spring. If we mount it just like that it's going to sit really high. So we can take some leaves out. Uh, for doing mock-up I'm going to use the bottom leaf the top leaf and maybe a couple in between uh, just to get it set up and that will simulate uh, ride height and then once we get some weight in the car then we'll put additional weaves in to get it to sit how we want and it's not going to be super bouncy but uh, we're going to get this all apart and then uh, get this mounted on the rear and then we can hopefully slide it up underneath the car. Alright so uh, here's kind of the first step. We have two big heavy C-clamps put on here, we hose down the, the, uh, the center, center bolt in the spring and uh, with, with coil and we got the C-clamps mounted on here, they're, they're relatively tight, they're snug, uh, well they're past snug um, and what we need to do is basically loosen this bolt and as we slowly loosen this bolt we're going to loosen the C-clamps um, and that's going to slowly let the tension off and then eventually it's going to get to the point where the bolt is off and out and then we're going to slowly let these clamps out uh, loose as we go until all the tension's off of the spring. This is something that's, uh, these A and T springs are pretty dangerous. You've got to be careful when you're doing this. Um, definitely take your time. Make sure everything's, you know, going nice and slow and smooth. You don't want to just um, loosen these real quick in one shot. You've got to go back and forth. Uh, something I like to do just to be safe, a lot of times I'll take a chain, like this is my chain I used to lift engines out. I'll wrap it around the spring. Um, and I'll put a clevis or a bowl or something through it 
So if for some reason something happens and one of these clamps uh, slips and it goes to blow apart, the chain will catch it and it's not going to go flying across the room or worse at me or somebody else that's uh, working in the shop. So definitely an added uh, safety net to do. Uh, there's a bunch of ways to do this. This is just the way that I've done it over the years that uh, works for me um, and seems to be fairly safe, uh, at least for me. So we're going to put the chain on, loosen this bolt in the bottom and then slowly start uh, pulling everything apart. smoothly because it was already off the car off the, of a Model A rear um, it didn't quite have as much tension as it would have uh, uh, originally when it was all mounted uh, but it's still good to be as safe as possible in doing this it's uh, something that you can never be too safe taking buggy springs apart so the reason we did this is now we've all taken apart the main leaf is very very springy we can take this apart and spread it pretty easily so what we're going to do is We'll slide right over here, and then by hand, I should be able to flex this over, and like that. So we're going to spread it apart here. Ooh. All right, so we're going to we're going to spread it apart here with a little bit of help uh, from Andrew. He's going to help me get this spread apart. But you can see just by hand with a little bit of force, this thing can spread out. So with two guys. You can pretty easily spread this, this main leaf apart um, and get it attached. Then from there we can start stacking leaves and get it underneath of the car, but this is the easiest way to do it. Um, you can do it with a spreader, you can make a spreader tool, but for me it's always been easier to just uh, assemble the main leaf first and then put all the other ones on top of it and uh, do it backward, a reverse of how we did it before. We used the clamps, clamp it together and then put a bolt back through it and that seems to work for me. So. We'll get this attached and then uh, swap the drums and then we can roll it underneath and hopefully uh, start mocking it up in place. two top leaves uh, that have a little bit of tension in them. I clamped them together. Uh, I just grabbed a stack of washers. We're just doing our initial mock-up now. We're going to have to boil this thing apart a couple times as we work on it. Um, so I'm not too worried about uh, right now. But what I need to do is take up the space in the bottom here because uh, the bolt's a little long. Uh, but I want to use this square-headed bolt because it locates it, uh, the rear spring in the rear cross member. So I put that on there, take it up. I can tighten this together, draw it together. That's going to keep uh, the spring together, and it's going to give us a tiny bit of height in the, uh, or you know, a little bit more lift in it to kind of simulate what it'll be original uh, when we're done. Um, and I can draw this together, take this clamp off here, and uh, we're pretty much set. And then we can roll it underneath here. So find my adjustable. 
it's a square headed nut, so draw this together. And it's good to use the, the C clamp instead of just using the center bolt. Uh, trying to draw it together with the center bolt, which we probably could have done here, but it's not good for the threads to put all that force on just the center bolt. It's good to use the uh, use the C-clamp to take up most of the force uh, so you're not putting all the torque on the threads, which could pull the threads apart uh, as you're doing it, which is going to cause it to fly apart. So always use your C-clamp. And we're just about there. There, take a little bit of this off here. There we go, and that's together. Good to go. Now we can roll it underneath and, uh, and clamp it up in place. exciting part of the build thus far. Uh, this is my favorite part of building a car when you get um, all of your piles of parts together that you've been gathering and kind of tinkering with and finally you can set it on four wheels on some suspension and kind of get a look at what it's going to finally look like. Uh, and even though the ride height isn't exactly what we want, it's, uh, it's getting pretty close. Uh, I have to do some modifications in the rear. The uh, 36 rear wishbones are hitting the center X member section. Uh, so what we need to do is I'm going to be uh, changing the angle of the wishbones in the back and shortening them. Uh, and also I'm going to play with the, uh, the spring a little bit more and try and get it to sit just a little bit lower in the rear. Uh, the front's going to drop a little bit once once we have some engine weight in it. I tested it and we jumped up and down on it to kind of get an idea of the, of the ride height in the front. I think it's going to be really good. Uh, so I'm pretty happy frame and the body flow really nicely together. You can kind of see how that's going to look eventually once they start making all our patch panels and pulling everything together. And uh, yeah, I can, uh, I can sit in this thing when nobody's around, make engine noises, and uh, just have fun. So uh, it's probably going to stay like this for a little while uh, just because it's been apart for too long. I want to sit in it and stare at it a bunch. So uh, I'm going to work on some other stuff here soon. And we'll definitely get some more videos for you guys uh, going on that. So that's all I got for this episode. Thanks, guys, for watching. As always, we do videos on uh, every Friday. And occasionally on Tuesdays, we do throw videos out there when we have uh, a bunch of stuff going. Or we have a bunch of back backlog videos. We'll throw one in on Tuesday. So 
Thanks, guys. Catch you later.